Thank you for listening to Comics for Fun and Profit. This is Colin Drew with your sneak peek at next week, episode number 525, where Co- Drew and I will be released. <laughs> Drew and I will be talking about comics originally releasing August 14th, 2019. As you can tell by the condition my ability to speak is in. And Drew, say hi. I am also sick this week, so uh, we are we are two injured brothers um, making the best of it for you, the listener. So we hope uh, we hope that worked out for you. The show must go on. I am <laughs> unable to speak, and Drew is is currently being held down by all the phlegms and sore throats in the world. So. Yes, yes. So we'll try to uh, we'll try to remember our cough button um, on our mics. If we I don't can. know that I have one. I'll remember your cough button <laughs> after the in, in post production. Um, we got some feedback based on um, our discussion of uh, getting creator signatures last week. Ah. Jason says he, he thinks it's a it's the mass selling of all of autographs. That's why creators now are charging for signatures and you know kind of being a little different, a little harder to to deal with. He doesn't blame them. When you see one person carrying 50 copies of, of a comic to be signed, um, that he gets it. He gets why creators uh, could could charge and could uh, kind of be a little salty if you don't want a personalized signature. I think we're on the same page there. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> uh, Franklin wrote in and said, "Hey, Kyle, Disney announced a 12.99 bundle for Disney Plus, Hulu." Yeah, they did. And ESPN Plus, that's going to drop in November. When are you going to get it? November. I will be there <laughs> day one. The only thing I'm like, ah, is because like, I currently have Hulu without ads. Like, I have, what's up, thanks for playing Hulu. And this is kind of peasant Hulu that's, that's combined in here. So I wonder if there's a stage above this where I can be non-peasant Hulu. So we shall see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so maybe a... a, a... A nineteen ninety nine bundle that has no ads. Fifteen ninety nine. Come on, man. I'm jumping <laughs> in the ground floor. Let's let's do this. Yeah, may, yeah, maybe. What does ESPN Plus have? I am completely unaware, but it'll is be it? the first time I will have tuned into ESPN since cutting the cord approximately four to five years ago. So bring is that it like on. like UFC fights and stuff. Yeah, yeah maybe some uh, some MAC championships. Oh well, there you go. I'm in. I'm in on that. <laughs> That'd be go. cool. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we're probably going to check that. We've got Hulu already, so um, we, we, we can just roll that bad boy in. I don't know. I don't know how, that, how that'll work. Will they send us an email and say, hey, we want you to... You're already doing Hulu. Why don't you do this instead? Hey, while you're at it, let's do this. Yep. Yeah. So, and then, um, you know, some of the things that have been announced on Disney+, Plus, uh, I'm a way more excited for than stuff that's on DC streaming. So Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Although I still wouldn't mind seeing some of those DC shows, I'll wait for a nice bundle like this um, and, and see and see how that goes. Uh, let's see. Let's shoot over to Comicron for their latest top ten uh, for July. So we've got we don't have the full numbers, but we do have some information that came out. Um, July of this year versus July of last year. Um, about flat. Comics are down maybe, <coughs> maybe point seven three percent. So that's not too bad. And this year versus last year, uh, it's down about four percent. So kind of kind of a hefty one there. <coughs> Marvel crushes on uh, the shares, the market share again, forty five percent to DC's twenty seven. Image at eight and a half still. Uh, IDW at four, uh, Dark Horse at two, Dynamite at two, and Boom, Viz, Titan, Archie, everybody else below one. Now, we get to the com- the top selling uh, comics, and we have a twofer at the top uh, from Jonathan Hickman, which is House of X number one and Powers of X number one. Two Both six dollar s- books. Two six dollar books from Marvel. Um, I did not read either one of those. Kyle, did you? Nope. And then a bargain, <coughs> number three, an eight dollar book in ASM yeah. twenty five. Holy crap! Yeah, yeah. Spider Man twenty five at eight dollars comes in at three. Um, Walking Dead one ninety three, uh, 
is returnable? Which is interesting. Um, I doubt very much anybody's going to return them. Um, <laughs> Wait, this is over? I just jumped on. Um, and so I, I I think that's that's interesting. It had such a nice spike for its final issue. So the word got out. Um, so there was some FOC movement on it. Mm-hmm. Um, not enough to take the top spot. And if it has an asterisk, don't they, re- don't, don't they reduce it by 15%? Oh yeah, that's true. Um, whatever its dollars are, so or sales numbers are, which I hate. And I think it's stupid, yeah. but whatever. Um, let's see. After that, we have Batman: Last Night on Earth number two coming in at rank five. Curse of the White Knight number one at rank six. Batman Who Laughs number seven at rank seven. Uh, Black Cat number eight takes the eighth spot. The Mortal Hulk twenty takes the ninth spot. And regular old Batman number 74 takes the 10th spot, which means 75 is outside of the top 10 or 73, whichever one. It, I can't remember which going comes out first, the odd or the even. Hmm. Do you remember? I do not. I'm assuming both came out in that month. So. Yeah. Um, so what do we think about this top 10 overall? We've got uh, one image, four DC, and five Marvel. There you go. Batman Last Night on Earth, number two. Okay, so Batman Who Laughs, six. We know that Batman Who Laughs, uh, I mean, we got seven here. We know that six was just shy of 100,000. Um, so, I think we got six books over 100K. Including Curse of the White Knight? Yeah, Curse of the White Knight's the one where I can't figure out if it might be just under. And you think seven Batman who laughs seven is under? Correct. Okay, I'm gonna go with uh, the top five being over instead of six. Okay. Hedge my bets a little bit on that, uh, but it's nice to see Walking Dead back over hundred thousand. If that's the case. Yeah, it actually says that if you look but look right under the the uh, between top selling comics by units and top selling comics by dollars of the blurb, it said the asterisk for the Walking Dead 183 meters is returnable, which I presume was the case because retailers were not informed of its significance. But it's hard to imagine anyone had copies to return. Yeah, <clears throat> but in the past we've noticed that the the asterisk has not met that they've actually not reported all the numbers yeah. since it was. Um. Let's see. Uh, Marvel put out a whopping 105 comics in July. DC did 86. IDW 45. Image 50. Uh, Dark Horse 18. Boom 15. Um, and if you count in graphic novels and uh, comics together, Marvel shipped 150 items. DC 110. Damn. They are not messing around. No, not messing no. around. At, nope. Big, big numbers. IDW ships more than Image in that chart as well. Yeah, it's interesting, wasn't it? <laughs> <clears throat> now, um, one thing that popped up on the dollar chart for comics, which surprised me, was Vampirella at number 10. Uh, mm-hmm. The first, first issue from Dynamite cracked the top 10 by dollar amount. Um... Is that what does that mean? Does that yeah. mean that its discounts are lower, or I think it had quite a few different variants as well. It also has an asterisk for returnability, so I don't know if it's one of those things where uh, a lot of retailers reached for the high variants, knowing that they can just return any of the the uh, the regular one number ones. Yeah, so it displaced uh, Batman, kicked it out of the top ten completely. Which is which is a surprise. Yeah, there is a blurb up here. Dark Horse had another strong month, uh, up twenty seven percent year to date, thanks to Umbrella Academy and Dynamite. Saw a big jump in dollar sales overall with Vampirella number one, which broke into the top ten in the dollar charts. We know ninety thousand copies of that went to Diamond, though that figure likely includes overseas copies. Okay, that doesn't, that doesn't really clear anything up, but they do talk about that in the little blurb. To yeah. No, we know it's way less than that, then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Top-selling graphic novels by units. We've got uh, Joker, 
number one, Bad Weekend. Uh, number two, Deadly Class, Volume 8. They call us Enemy. Adventure Zone, number, Volume 2. Dear Justice League, Conan the Barbarian, Volume 1. Miles Morales, Volume 1. Die, 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 Volume 1. And Daredevil by Chip Zdarsky, Volume 1. Kind of disappointed um, Die, 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 Volume 1 wasn't a better value than 1999. Yeah, I think it's... Wasn't it 7 or 8 Yeah, issues? I think they went a little deep with the issue count, but I really like the, uh, the ability to... <clears throat> get that pretty good value at that first one. Yeah, yeah. Anything else in this early peak at uh, the sales for July, or do you want to kick it till next week? That's about it. I want to kick it down the road and see the real numbers later on. All right. Uh, let's take a look at the Cowabunga FOC. Of course, the FOC is the final order cutoff. It's our last ability to look at books right before they come out, still add them to the order, still have them printed, and still have them come on time. Um, either we missed the boat on a few things, weren't thinking right when the few things come out, or we're finally able to see some art on some things. This is our last bite at the apple for some books, so Drew and I like to peruse through it and see if there's anything else we think we need from this. Uh, of course, we get our list curated from Galbunga Comics, and you can do the same. Uh, there are lists in the show notes here on how you can do that. If your LCS uh, doesn't do that kind of thing, Galbunga is more than willing to get you on that list. And if your LCS can't get you a book and you want to make sure you get it, um, Galbunga Comics can hook you up and mail those right to your door, and they'd be happy to serve you in that regard. Uh, but we like to see the books that Eric tosses in his email as FOC items that he wants to talk about. He's talking about Batman 181 facsimile edition. Of course, this is a reprint of the uh, Poison Ivy first appearance, I believe. Yes, from Batman yes, it is. 181. Uh, we really like these facsimile editions on Grails that we will not be able to have in our real life. Um, it's fun to just have a facsimile that looks very, very darn close to those. Uh, that we can just kind of put on our wall and trick people into thinking we have. Uh, yes, we're all about deception. That's right. Drew, we have the penultimate issue of Doomsday Clock, number 11 of 12, coming out. We don't want to miss that. Um, so the Jeff Johns written and Gary Frank cover of Doomsday Clock 11. So just FYI on that. Wow. Yeah, we have the 1 in 25, Web of Black Widow, number 1. We have the Megan Hetrick variant on that one. Um, and then we have Something is Killing Children, number one. The FOC Frizen variant from Broom. Um, that's cool. That's awesome. Um, so I, it looks like that's an FOC exclusive from Boom. And it's Jenny Frizen, so it's kind of exciting, actually. <laughs> there you go. All right, so Drew, let's jump in and see what we can find uh, through this week's FOC. And let's start with those Dark Horse books. Uh, do we think that No One Left to Fight is done? No, I think it went to a nice second print or whatnot. People talked about it, and I, I think it can go up a little bit. So should we be interested in the third issue? Third issue, yes. Yes, indeed. And we look at Triage, which is Philip Sebi book. And uh, it's, it's pretty sci-fi looking. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think I was interested in it during the uh, pre-order cycle, and I, I still don't think I am. So I, I think I want to bounce on that one. Yeah, I just assumed it was about checking people into an ER at a hospital, but it is not. It is it's not. about other things, so I'm going to pass. Anything else in dark? Oh, we got everything, number one. Did we talk about that? I did not. All right, I don't. I, there's a lot going on on this. Holy crap! <laughs> That's why. Okay. That's why. That's why I didn't talk about Sorry. it because I, I didn't know where to start. <coughs> Christopher Cantwell, I N J Coolbart, on the writing, and I N J Coolbart, three initials and a last name. Come on, you're killing me here. Um, everything is a gleaming new mega department store which arrives to extraordinary thrill and rapidly escalates into an explicable mania in the small town of Holland, Michigan. When random hellish fires and unshakably uh, psychic disturbances start to overtake the community, a few <laughs> like... De what are you laughing at, May? A few I like... Was clearing my throat. I was depressive out-of-towner Lori and a suspicious local named Rick begin to suspect everything. 
and it's catalog perfect manager surely all right this i'm i almost fell asleep during this lesson so, <laughs> so yeah we're done with dark horse yeah i'm not doing that um the aforementioned batman 181 facsimile uh we also have batman versus raz Ghul number one and a batman who laughs number one batman day special for 30 cents oh. that cost yeah so this is a subsequent printing um going to be a ton of these out there but for 30 cents i mean grab a well, couple right it says free on the cover so <coughs> these are things that people are going to come in expecting to be free <laughs> so just FYI. well we could guarantee ourselves through foc we're exactly. not really a retailer exactly but exactly. we could buy a retailer special edition through our good buddies at Cowboy. Exactly. And it's, it's worth 30 cents. Absolutely. I don't have to, don't have to go to the, the LCS. Well, I don't have to go anywhere because I, I bought it the first time, but that's okay. And you know, our LCS isn't going to have any for free. No, they're going to say free? What? You they're they're going to say, what's Batman Day? Yeah, yeah no doubt. Uh, Batman versus Ra's al Ghul number one. Written by this new guy named Neil Adams. And yeah. he's doing the art as well. <coughs> yeah, don't ask him to sign it, but... He will if you buy it from him. For an additional twenty dollars. <laughs> yeah. You can't you can't get a cover price from him and have him sign it. I'm not sure that he he would have sold it at cover cover price, but normally if you buy things from his stand, he'll sell right. them at grat. But if you walk up with things that he Yeah, does, but it's twenty bucks them. or thirty bucks. There's a couple so, deals there on a few things. I don't think so. You're being too nice. Quit throwing stones at Neil Adams. You want to throw stones at Greg Horn? I'm right there lined up with you, but not Neil Adams. <laughs> Why? I'm not, he seems okay. I mean, he fought for a lot of money with, for creators and stuff like that. He's he's definitely a money first kind of guy, but he's old. I respect it. All right, fine. Okay, what's this deceased? A good day to die. Why is this back already? Because deceased was popular, and we are grasping at everything we can to do it. So it already ended? No, it didn't. So is this like a secondary offshoot? I believe it's some sort of offshoot of sorts. Let me read what it says. Sorry, I was too busy looking at a, at a variants. I'm going to look at the horror cover. Ooh, very cool. All right. While the mainstays of the Justice League, Superman, Green Lantern, and Wonder Woman battle the worldwide infection on the pages of Deceased, a group of other heroes work to stop the impending apocalypse, no matter who they have to kill. Ha ha ha. Mr. Terrific assembles a motley group of surviving heroes, including Mr. Miracle, uh, Big Barba, John Constantine, Blue Beetle, and Booster Gold as they attempt to fight back against the tide of death. Can this ragtag group save the world where the Justice League has thus far failed? Is that cleared up for you, homie? Yeah, yeah. That's good. I'm, I'm, now I get it. There you go. Now we're doing Dollar Comics. Here's a Detective, 854, uh, reprinting... Something about Batwoman and the religion of crime. Even at a dollar. I do not care. <laughs> Rock a white and right in Batwoman. Maybe it was good. Yeah. Uh, the aforementioned Doomsday Clocks. Mm -hmm. Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy number one. Uh, we got a cardstock variant, either Harley or Poison Ivy. You can oh, choose. Oh, there are germ. Holy crap. Uh, I didn't order these. And they're connecting. The cardstocks uh, are? They're cardstock, they're connecting, and they're art germ. Gah. You're speaking things that I like. Crap. And they are <sighs> four ninety nine a piece. <sighs> Minus discount. Six bucks. What do you think? Put me down for one of each. Dang it! I'm writing it's it on so, my list. It is so easy. Uh, deceased number one. Did you one. look at the cover? They're really good looking. Sure. They're nice. Shut up. No, they are. They're nice. Uh, there's a deceased number one. Also a... Uh, this is a Halloween... What's that Halloween thing called? Yeah, Halloween Comic Fest. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a 40 cent comic. You can pick that up if you so choose. It says one of six. That's cool. Oh, so it's... Oh, okay. <coughs> yeah, it's... Okay. Gotcha. 
So is this re is this re releasing DC's one? What is it? So is that re getting uh, DC's one for a for yeah uh, yeah yeah. Uh, That's just re releasing or a one in two fifty version for a hundred bucks or not hundred bucks whatever that gets it there. Yeah, hundred bucks. Dang. Hmm. That's cool if you uh, didn't end up with a deceased number one. Uh, it's a nice way to do it. Yeah. Uh, for all you Legion of Superheroes fans, there's Millennium number one, Legion of Superheroes. That's a two-issue miniseries. You get a little taste of just what Legion of Superheroes has been uh, missing from your lives. Man, there's a lot of stuff offered from DC this week. Yep, yep. Including that is all I have. over the penultimate Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Oh, yeah. Skipped right on by that. Yeah. Too much Sorry stuff going that. on. I wanted to look at that Eastman cover. I'm sure it's fantastic. Or that Freddie Williams cover. Never mind. Not an Eastman cover on it. Good looking cover. All right, we've done enough in DC. There's all kinds of stuff. I'm not forgetting the lowest lane number threes and things of the world. Let's head on down to IDW. Um, battle plug number one from Mike Norton. Um, this has been out a couple of times, and this is his first image version of this, I believe. Oh, so nothing in IDW straight to image. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I skipped right over IDW. Yeah. Do you have something? No, just wanted to make sure. Cool. Back to Battle Bug. <coughs> I think I bought one of these for him to sign while I was there at C2E2 the one year. Yeah, I think he's done it. Um, like, independently for a while. Mm -hmm. If you take a look at Crowded number 9, um, Crowded number 8 just came out, and guess what? My letter's in the back. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Along with a picture of my little puppy. Ah. My little my little puppers made the made the made the grade in crowded number eight and uh, will live on for Im immortally. Thanks. Longer than me. <laughs> That's funny. So they were asking for dog pictures or did you just send it in because you're there's that a, guy that type of guy there's now? A, there's a dog in uh in the in the book, ah. so it's a, kind of a, like a connection. And I was not the only the only person who sent a dog in. Another person also sent a dog in. Their dog was dead though, oh. so it was kind of like they were like that pulling on heart, for a heart weird strings. Picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that means it wasn't dead in the picture. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Their dog dog had died. Okay, gotcha. where mine is still kicking. Speaking of which, die number seven. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and Drew, I'm going to let you talk about Pretty Deadly Rat number one. Well, this is a, obviously a... Hey, it is. It is actually... <laughs> that one's actually a Kelly Suda comic. This is actually a, a sequel to Pretty Deadly. Um, Kelly Suda comic. What, did, what was the book that we thought was, or I thought was, not that long ago? It was like Pretty Something, and you're like... Eh, pretty no, something Deadly, and you're like, this is obviously... Wait, nope, never mind. <laughs> no, it is not. Okay, so I wonder how accessible this is going to be for folks who skipped all of Pretty Deadly or haven't read it since 2010. Uh, I mean, if I remember, I read them in succession and didn't find it easy to follow then. Yes, yes. So um, maybe there'll be a recap page or two? Hey, uh, hit me up. I will sell you my <laughs> copies of Pretty Deadly for not a yeah. lot. Yes. <laughs> and we got a little something we like to call Spawn 300. And oh snap! About... Do we have wait wait? Do we have covers? What all covers do we have? We got oh, a lot of covers. No, man. we don't have covers. No. We got some covers. <sighs> the opinion script. Ooh, sketches I got there. the the Capula one. That's sweet. I know this J. Scott Campbell. I saw. I loved that one. Oh, there's that Opinia. Have we seen the cover A? And it's just not. Oh, that's cool. We've seen the cover A. You've seen the cover A? I think so. When we or, or, During the pre-order cycle, cover A was available. Wasn't it? Oh, uh, no. I don't think we had final art on anything. I don't know. Uh, maybe you're right. 
Maybe you're right. Yeah, good it's, looking. These are all really good. Good covers. But they're eight bucks a piece. I mean, I know. But I, if I look at them here, then I'm uh, we're good. Capullo and McFarlane would be a good one. What but makes the most sense if you want to go deep on Spawn, um, get with kind of get with uh, Calabunga because they they appear to be going kind of deep on Spawn. So they're usually one of your better retailers for getting a good deal on those high yeah. and high ratio variant variants. And it says next month records will be broken with Spawn three hundred one. Oh, I guess that's record of longest ongoing um, independent comic, creator owned comic. So yeah, that that would be a good one to have too. Yeah, it, is three hundred one or three hundred two the one that has uh, she Spawn? Three hundred two is the one that we talked about having she Spawn. Yeah. So lots of Spawn to choose from there. Yeah. <laughs> I think that is all I have from Image. All right, let's dabble down to Marvel, where we continue with Absolute Carnage in Scream and Symbiote Spider-Man versions as well. We got uh, Jerry Conway and Eric Larson and Mark Bagley uh, together on Amazing Spider-Man Going Big number one. Uh, Conway is a heck of a legendary writer of Spider-Man. Larson had a heck of a run. Bagley had a heck of a run on Spider-Man. Um, this is kind of cool. Uh, might be good. Is it current continuity? Do we... I mean, man. A lot of spider stuff going on. A lot of spider stuff. That's the only problem. Yeah. Got an annual for Ghost Spider. Who is the rebranding of Spider Gwen? Yeah, officially, I, I did. Some I got com- into that. I got confused. Yeah, well, I, I I missed the memo as well. House of X, of course, number one going to a third print. We just saw that it sold super well. Um, the ability to jump on here at number four. <laughs> and why are we getting a five issue <laughs> miniseries on Star Wars Jedi Jedi hit Jedi? Jedi Fallen Order Dark Temple when most of those other Star Wars things have been one shots. The Age of Republic stuff had been one shots, not necessarily the Fallen Order stuff. Oh, okay. The Age of Republic stuff was a, a certain time frame where we got some really cool stories, but they're still doing some other things here with Fallen Order. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Is um J. Scott Campbell still doing the Black Cat? As far as I know, where's he at? Uh, yep. Another nice one. Yeah. Those are lovely. That's all I had in Marvel. Yeah. I don't know that I care about Spider-Woman facsimile edition. I'm trying to think if there's anything else going on in any of these things we need to care about. <coughs> there's your trade paperback for Major X. Get them all in one there, Drew. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> um, Immortal Hulk's been cold for a couple months now. Anything going on there? Oh, is it? Has it been... Uh... We haven't talked about it. the skyrocketing of, it, of uh, the last few issues, I don't think, so... Yeah. Too many sales. Yeah, let's head on down to Boom. People catching on. Uh, is there that something is killing children? Yeah, and is we your... have a FOC um, exclusive Jenny Frisian. And you like the looks of that, right? Heck yeah, that is an awesome looking cover. And not going to be a ton of them because that is FOC exclusive. That's awesome. Um, how awesome is it? Is it awesome like you want one? Yeah, put me down for one. I'm writing it down right now. Prison. Ninety-nine. So far, I've added nine dollars to this one. Uh, nothing from Dynamite for me, I don't think. Oh, we talked. Wait, can we talk once again for a bit about yes. uh, Once in Future? We talked highly about that selling 
just banana sandwich onto a third print. Another cover completely different for the third print. More Dan Mora art on the third print. Keep buying these. These are awesome new covers. Uh, Karen Gillan's reimagining, of course, the Once and Future King, Future King book, um, a six-issue series, and one issue has gone back for a third print already. Nice. Yes. <coughs> All right, Dynamite. Uh, <laughs> nothing. And uh, if you if you if you miss Dark Red from Aftershock, you have a chance for uh, a, a reprint for thirty cents. 40 nice. Cents. Something like that. Halloween Comic Fest, Dark Ride number one. Of course, Tim Seeley. Very nice. I like it. Perfect book for Halloween. Aftershock, Midnight Vista number one. Of course, Midnight Vista is Elliot Ray Hall with Wando on art. Oliver Flores and his stepfather, Nomar Perez, were turning right into Midnight Vista Road when they were both abducted by aliens. To Oliver's mother, they were both just missing to the police. They were declared legally dead, and to everyone else growing uh, up in Albuquerque, Oliver Flores was the milk carton kid. His life was a cautionary tale of an eight-year-old who was kidnapped and killed by a stepdad while out for some ice cream. But now, years later, a fully grown adult Oliver walks back into town. He has been returned, and he remembers everything. So that's cool. Yeah. I'm abducted, thought to be dead. Mourned and grieved. Back. Oh, the cover, cool. The cover, uh, the ten cover incentive, uh, incentive is cool because it got like uh, the big gray-headed alien doing the shh, don't tell anybody thing. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. We got plenty more Halloween uh, comics fest stuff from Aspen and Source Point and Mad Cave and a bunch of other uh, publishers down there at the bottom. So those are all between 30 and 25 cents and 35 cents and 40 cents. So you can pick those up pretty cheaply. From Oni Press, Rick and Morty present Flesh Curtains, number one. That's right. I said Flesh Curtains. That is, of course, the name of Rick's rock band with Bird Person and Squanchy. Booed off of every stage, they consider giving up until Rick invents a time machine capable of writing songs people can't resist. <laughs> Awesome. Sounds like that movie. Oh, the one where everybody forgets the Beatles? Yeah, yeah. Sounds a lot we like were that. We're on the same page there. That's awesome. I think that's all I had in the FOC. All right, of course. Well, what about. Did you, what? Did we, nah, it's Cinescope. Never mind. I'm an idiot. That's not. You're not an idiot. No. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> Stop like, it. No, it's an, it's, it's an Cinescope movie. Anyways, that was just our... <coughs> it was my first big coughing fit. <coughs> that was our travel through FOC to see if we could find anything we wanted to make sure yes. we add. I, of course, already found three things that I wanted to make sure we added on this one. Um, and I almost added Once in Future. Did I add Once in... No, I didn't add Once in Future. I didn't add Once in Future King third print. So, I found multiple things that I think I needed to add on this. Uh... Hopefully y'all can too. Fantastic. Uh, let's see. Uh, the good folks at Skybound sent me. A, I'm a Skybound insider, which Ooh. means I sign up for their, I signed up for their newsletter, and they said, "Hey, we're hey insiders. We're very excited to announce that we're starting a segment of our insiders list exclusively for those over 21 years old. We're going to have some deals, some news, some events that we can only share with the adults." If that sounds like something you'd be into, then come on in and sign up for the Skybound Reserve List. So what do you think that's all about? <laughs> it sounds dirty. It does. Yeah. It does. Is it like a Walking Dead wine bottles or something? Yeah, it's something like that. We already have those. Let me ship them to you. No. Just yeah. for being cool. There you go. Maybe. Uh, let's slide over and take a look at some of the hot stuff burning up the eBay charts this week from our good friends over at CoverPrice.com. Um, number one is Silver Surfer 81. The first cameo appearance of Tyrant, who along with Galactus is rumored to show up in MCU Phase 4. Sold 50 copies and selling for raw sales of around $76. Uh, 
Uh, we got Gut Ghost from Scout Comics. Uh, we talked about this. Yeah. But don't, we did not make it our pick. No, because the cover freaked me out. <laughs> yeah, it sold 30 copies. Um, and uh, one of them is a CGC that sold for 65 bucks. But it looks like it's selling for triple to quadruple cover. Yeah. So, just FYI, if something freaks me out, it might be worth picking up. Yeah. Uh, Boys, number one, uh, 2006 uh, Wildstorm book from DC, uh, is falling in the Umbrella Academy's footsteps and seeing some post-release love. It sold 80 copies this week. Um, I had a high sale of $385 for a CGC 9.8. People loving, loving the, uh, the boys. Uh, Spawn 61, first appearance of Jessica Priest as the first female she spawned. This sold 23 copies um, and had a high raw sale of 42 bucks. So apparently she spawn has already been a thing. Well, it's like the Jenica person and Jenica as a turtle, right? Ah. Or Jerica. Did we? Nah, it's it's it. still Jenica. We went over this. You're the only person confused. Yes. Um, Walking in 193, final issue, 78 copies sold, um, selling for 125 bucks as a CGC uh, 9.8. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 110 from 1972 is the first appearance of Gibbon, who what? is a is a mutant with an ape-like build and agility. agility. Um, it sold 22 copies for some reason. It's and a poor uh, man's I, gorilla grod. I guess I'm not sure. <coughs> Did I miss something on Gibbon? Yeah, I'm not sure on Gibbon. Uh, and then we have the Thor, Jane Foster stuff. We got Canto still doing well, Farmhand still doing well, um, House of X number one doing well. Um, I still don't know what the Gibbon thing is all about. They didn't really do a very good job of explaining that. Did no. They? Um, Venom Annual Number One uh, is at the 11th rank. Sold 33 copies. Hey, it, ha <coughs> it has a fun variant for Lady Hellbender. What If 23 features uh, in canon origin of the Eternals. Sold 13 copies. Mister Miracle Number Six, the first appearance of the female Furies, who are going to be appearing in the New Gods DC film. Uh, Silver Surfer number 82 is the first full appearance of Tyrant. Um, it's selling well. Another Walking Dead 193. Another What If number 10. This is the Jade Foster, Foster Thor's Hammer. Um, some people have stacks and stacks of these. Um, I, I, I gotta look through and see if I don't have one of those. I bet you I do somewhere. <laughs> uh, Captain Marvel number 8. Uh, the first appearance of Star. Uh, raw sale, uh, high raw sale of 45 bucks. Hey. <coughs> a boys number three, also selling, which uh, included the first appearance of the seven and all through all seven of those dudes. Yeah, as, as the seven. I think it's the first time as the seven. Mm -hmm. And I had a seven day trend and a high sale of 100 bucks for CGC 9.6. Uh, Powers of X and House of X rounding out that top 20. So, some good stuff there. Anything strike your fancy on that, any of that? A few things that I should be selling right now. Uh. Alright, let's hit that uh, um, sneak peek at next week then. Alright, let's head over to previewsworld.com find new releases by August 2019. And start where we love to start. Let's start in Dark Horse. Or no, let's start an image, duh. Too busy looking at the Die 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 Stealth AF 2-pack. <laughs> A slow... Well, we have Reaver number 2. We want to make sure we snag that up. Of course, Justin Jordan on that one. And your ability to grab Reaver number one as a second print there. So that would be a good thing to jump out. Of course, a very nice Justin Jordan written uh, comic there. I'm pretty excited about White Trees. Even though it's a two-issue miniseries, it is Chip Zdarsky and Chris Anka working together. 
Uh, looks really good. Wish it wasn't five dollars. Uh, wish it, wish it was a four issue miniseries yeah, instead a, of a two. Just about to uh, say, yeah. But whatever. Uh, but I still, I'm still interested. And the end of Unnatural, the series finale, the end, the grand finale of the ground breaking Unnatural story is here. I kind of think this should have been around eight issues. Oh, yeah. uh, they probably could have shaved some of this stuff off. It, it, it meandered for a bit, but I'm um, anxious to see how it does finally end up. Very cool. All right, heading down to Dark Horse. Hmm. Uh. Uh-uh. Not much for me. Anything for you? She could no. fly. Lost pilot. The end of that. All right, down to IDW. All right, I'm also not finding also anything. Now. And into <coughs> DC. Yeah. Um, a bit thin, but I bet you there's something in here I'm just not seeing. Um, a lot of cardstock variants, um, which never really seem to have taken off in the secondary mm. market. So we were concerned about that. We weren't sure. It doesn't seem like it's it's done anything. So it does not bode well for the acetate uh, covers yeah. that are coming up. Uh, but we'll talk about that when they there when they go. drop. Batman, you're the villain. The offer going to a second print. Issue 75, I mean. Yeah, I don't think anything is just jumping out at me. No, Titans Burning Rage, number one, Dan Juergens. Um, writing that. Okay, that's it's the stupid de- uh, Walmart reprints. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, down to Marvel. They're not stupid. They're No, they're, they're pretty good. good with the fact that they've been available and now they're being repackaged as stupid. Yes. Yes, yes. Um, we've got the new Sinister Syndicate. Uh this kind of debuted last issue or issue before, kind of in different pieces and parts. So, I'm not sure this is actually the first Sinister Syndicate, uh, but it's Beetle, Electro, Lady Octopus, Scorpia, White Rabbit, and uh, uh, it could be could be something. You never know. Gwenpool strikes back. Invisible Woman number one going to a second print. Silver Surfer or Prodigal Son. Before Silver Server Blacks even done. Because Silver Server Blacks there on three. There's that X Factor facsimile uh, for 87 that we're not really sure why. Yeah. We've reprinted Thor 15. All hail the All Father Thor. Ah, Sierra Smaller Publishers. <coughs> So what is this once in future down by boom? I've blown through a couple of the small publishers, by the way. Um, down there, what's I that? Because it's already out, right? I think this is the second print. I just mislabeled it. No. I don't know. Offer it again, something like that. Okay, so no, this is this is its first coming out. So it comes out August fourteenth. The second print's August twenty eighth. And the third print, September 4th. Oh, okay. So it's just so, sold through on orders before it even hits. Gotcha. That's that's good. Yeah, that's so good. that's a no-brainer. Get those. I am blowing down to Mad Cave Studios with Show's End by Anthony Cleveland and Jefferson Sidzinski. Looks pretty interesting. Um, takes place during, in Georgia during the 1920s. And follows a runaway seeking refuge with a traveling group of freak show performers. I think it looks pretty unique. The second issue of Second Coming. Uh, first issue was really good. It's a Mark Russell book that got booted from Vertigo and is now on Ahoy. It is probably, I would guess, their bestseller. And you can still get a second printing of Second Coming number one. That looks eerily familiar <laughs> than just like the first printing. Watcher, um, is Watcher a video game thing? Mm, well, that's Witcher. That's Witcher. I'm guessing, uh... That's Witcher. Yeah, okay. <coughs> that's Man, all I had. Look at a few things like Omni number one from Humanoids comics. All right, Drew. Um, this is the point of the podcast where I ask for your pick of the week. What's the one pick to make sure you snag up, run out, make sure you get, and don't miss? Because you gotta have it. 
Um, I'm probably going to go with White Trees, number one. Um, I think I know which one you're going with, so I'm going to... Yeah, I'll take that softball. Yeah, I'm going to go... <clears throat> I'm going to go with White Trees, number one, from Chip Zdarsky and Chris And I'm, of course, going to stick with Once in Future, number one. Um, now, granted, it's easy picking fruit when we talk about it right here today as coming up, but I was talking about it both on FOC and I believe a little bit before that as something you needed to be on the lookout for. And by golly, it looks like people are already getting 10 bucks a piece for both the first and second print on the secondary market before the book even comes out. So make sure you go and you pick up Once and Future, number one from Karen Gillen. <coughs> all right, before we cough our heads up and hack up anything else in your guys' ear, we want to thank you guys for listening all the way through to Drew and myself as we go through our FOCs our cover price top tens and of course our sneak peeks for you guys um if we missed anything this week feel free to drop us a line on any of our social medias or anything all that can be found at comics uh send us some feedback be part of the podcast tell us what you think's going on or if there's anything we missed or if you agree or if you got yourself a hold of some of those once in future number ones uh let me know that so for drew and for myself See ya.